Hey everybody, Brian here and welcome back to Southwestern Europe. If you've already watched our introduction to this region in Southwest Europe physical characteristics, hopefully we've whetted your appetite to learn more about the culture of this magnificent corner of the world. And speaking of appetite, perhaps you'll want to enjoy a French croissant, an Italian cannoli, or a Portuguese pastel de nata while you watch. Now, if you've run out of these tasty treats, I guess you'll just have to grab your passport, pack a bag, and fly over to enjoy them with us here. As you may recall, southwestern Europe consists of France, Andorra, Spain, Portugal, Monaco, Italy, San Marino, Vatican City, and Malta. Our objective today will be to analyze the people and culture of these nations, including population statistics, ethnicity, religion, language, government, and economics. The Population Let's start by discussing the population of this region. At a density of nearly 340 people per square mile, it's about as packed as a seafood restaurant on the Amalfi Coast in July. By comparison, the world's population density is 129 people per square mile of land. France, Italy, and Spain rank 2nd, 3rd, and 4th respectively in the European Union for population. Add Portugal and these four countries contain nearly all of the just over 183 million people who live in the region. For our lesson, let's call these countries the core four. On the other hand, tiny Malta, Monaco, Andorra, San Marino, and Vatican City have fewer than one million people combined. Over 80% of the population lives in an urban area in many of these countries. Compare that to the world's average of 56% and you'll see that the southwestern Europeans don't mind getting cozy with each other. And you've likely heard of some of these world-famous cities. Maybe you'd like to enjoy a croissant while gazing at the Eiffel Tower in Paris, or perhaps you prefer taking in some flamenco in Madrid. Or you can take a historical tour of Rome and see the Parthenon, the Forum, and the Colosseum. Yes, the cities of southwestern Europe have so much culture and history to offer. However, you may find the area a bit less crowded as years go by. The population in this region is projected to decline significantly by the year 2050. The death rate is outpacing the birth rate, and the cost of living in these countries is fairly high compared to the income, so people are postponing marriage and having fewer children. Additionally, many are leaving for economic opportunities elsewhere. While these cities are cultural hubs, there is greater earning potential elsewhere in Europe. But we'll get to the economy later. Those who do stay in southwestern Europe have plenty of time to enjoy it. The region has some of the longer life expectancies of the world. People in Italy and Spain enjoy nearly 84 years of life, compared with 79 years in the U.S. Apparently, pasta and paella do the body good. Politics and Economy each of the core four countries are part of the European Union, and all of the countries in the southwestern region rate highly on world measurements of political freedom. This means that, in general, their citizens are not denied basic human rights, and they are able to participate in the democratic process. The GDP in southwestern Europe is high compared to the world's average, but lags behind the northern countries in western Europe. On average, all of western Europe's GDP per capita was 39,770 US dollars in 2019. Each of the core four fell below this average. While there is a GDP per capita gap between Northern and Southern Europe, there is a similar gap even within Southern European countries. Northern Italy, led by the city of Milan, is an industrial powerhouse and center of fashion design. In 2016, Northern Italy's GDP per capita was about 38,000 US dollars, compared to 20,000 US dollars in agrarian Southern Italy. Spain experiences a similar phenomenon between its industrial north near Madrid and its rural south. Among the large southern European countries, France has the strongest economy, powered by telecommunications, shipbuilding, and aerospace engineering. But when you think about southwestern Europe, you're likely not dreaming about France's robust telecommunications industry or Madrid's industrial plants. You want to enjoy the endless beaches, delicious food, and the rich culture of the area. 
And you're not alone. Millions of people each year contribute to the tourism economy of these countries. In 2019, France, Spain, and Italy placed first, second, and fifth in the world respectively for total visitors. These travelers spend many euros on fine champagne, yamon, and lasagna, and that money flows right into the economies of these countries. There are many reasons to visit southwestern Europe, so let's see what else this region has to offer in terms of culture. Culture Stained glass windows, high vaulted ceilings, flying buttresses. Where are you? If you guessed an old European church or cathedral, you guessed right. Big city to small village, a church is right there in the center of nearly every town. Religion and there's a reason for that. The region has overwhelmingly been devoted to the Roman Catholic faith for centuries. In 380 CE, the Roman Empire made Catholicism, which is the largest branch of Christianity, the official religion of the empire. Since then, many of these lands have remained predominantly Catholic. Oh, and since I knew you were wondering, no, flying buttresses do not actually fly. Despite this common Catholic thread, religious devotion varies by country. 70% of Italians and Portuguese consider religion an important part of their daily lives, compared to only 30% of the French. Language Speaking of French, if you've ever heard French spoken aloud, you might think that it's a language of romance. A picnic blanket, a bottle of wine, the Eiffel Tower, an accordion player somewhere off in the distance. Je t'adore, mon amour. You may be surprised to find out that nearly all of the languages of this region are based on romance, but not the Eiffel Tower picnic blanket kind. The languages of the area are called Romance languages because they're derived from Latin, the language of the Roman Empire. Roman, Romance. See the connection? Examples of Romance languages include Italian, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. Now let's tie this all back together to our discussion about religion. For many years, Latin was the only language spoken at Roman Catholic functions, so it makes sense that these Catholic countries would have languages that come from Latin. Additionally, over half of the people in southwestern Europe can also speak conversational English. In general, Europeans consider language learning to be important, so it's only polite to return the favor by learning some basic phrases of the local language. While there are small variations in regional and local culture, most countries' populations are ethnically homogenous. Often, this means that a person's ethnicity matches their nationality. Over 90% of people in Italy are ethnic Italians, for example. There is, however, quite a bit of diversity within the Spaniard population. Regional groups such as the Asturians, Catalan, Basque and Galician live in Spain. Some Basque and the Catalan have supported independence movements for their land, and if you visit, you will encounter different languages, culture, and cuisine in each of these regions. Cuisine Speaking of cuisine, well, there's one particular cultural contribution from southwestern Europe that many people hold near and dear to their hearts and stomachs, and that's food. In Italy, there's a good chance that you'll need to loosen the belt a bit because you'll be eating and eating and eating. Pasta, pizza, seafood, keep it coming. There's a reason why Italian cuisine has been voted by Americans as their favorite foreign food. Additionally, the three top wine-producing countries in the world are located in southwestern Europe. Italy, France, and Spain. Cin cin alla nostra salute! Art these lands are also known for their tradition of artistic expression. The Italian Renaissance era was fueled by inventors and artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, and their work is visited by millions to this day, particularly in the city of Florence. If you want to see da Vinci's most famous creation, however, you'll need to go to France. In the Louvre in Paris, you can see the Mona Lisa, likely from a distance and standing on your tippy toes to try and get a photo over the sea of people crowding around this surprisingly small painting. Now, if crowds aren't your thing, don't worry. There are many other museums in Paris. They feature masterpieces from French artists such as Claude Monet, Auguste Renoir, and Paul Cezanne. Architecture Southwestern Europe is also home to numerous architectural wonders, such as Antoni Gaudi's Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Gustave Eiffel's eponymous tower in Paris, and the enduring symbol of the Roman Empire, the massive Colosseum. Many of these marvels have a variety of cultural influences. 
For instance, if you travel to southern Spain, you can see the magnificent Alhambra. Built during the Muslim occupation in the 13th century, this enormous palace features intricate geometric patterned designs. Yes, the culture of southwestern Europe is renowned the world over. There's a reason why there's a seemingly endless stream of tourists flocking to this relatively small corner of the globe. You could spend a lifetime visiting the coastal villages, the art museums, and the world-class restaurants of the area. But for now, this brings our adventure to a close. Did you get through your croissant? Or maybe two or three? I hope you enjoyed. Merci, grazie, and muchas gracias for joining our lesson today. And until next time, keep exploring. Hey, hey.